Over the years, I have come to realize that no matter how skillful we are, whether it's software, hardware, or mechanical engineering, if we do not take time to take care of our tools, to clean up our workspace, it actually wastes our time when we come back to do the creative work at hand. And that is why in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about a part of organizing our prototyping lab. Now, usually in a typical electronics lab such as this, it can be a home lab or it can be a small lab in a school or a university, we have three kinds of items. The first kind of item are instruments, those uh, big oscilloscopes, the power generators, the multimeters. The second type are usually the prototyping items that get reused projects after projects, and these could be development boards, uh, sensors. I usually kind of store them right here so that I can access them repeatedly. But for today, I want to specifically talk about the third item, which are the disposables. And uh, they are uh, usually electronics or mechanical items, and they are kind of bought in uh, more than one unit, maybe uh, from 10 to 100 units, and they get used up in each project. So for that purpose, let's first start with how I store them. In terms of storing them, I use these stackable IKEA boxes and they are also transparent and I have a lot of them and uh, I usually stack them up and I also label them in front. These IKEA boxes are known as Samla and uh, I just get the smallest one for stocking these uh, prototyping stock items. Now inside each of these boxes I have in standard plastic bags where I actually keep each of the items and I usually take the 10 by 15 cm Ziploc bags so that they can fit nicely within these uh, Samla IKEA boxes. So here are some examples of the Ziploc bags that I use. They come in standard sizes. As you can see, I have labeled them serially on the top right-hand corner. I also like to keep the original labels. For example, this is from Element 14, Mauser, and sometimes even in the electrostatic bags that they come with. This is an example of uh, the through-hole components that I got from RS. So no matter what bags they come in, I tend to put them all in standard sizes, also in Ziploc bags so that they don't kind of fall out. This is an example of another part that I got recently and, and sometimes I just keep them inside the bubble wrap or the desiccant that it comes with because that's what it is uh, recommended. Now I want to show a closer view of one of these uh, stackable IKEA boxes. As I said, I keep them all in serial and uh, this is basically how I retrieve them and after the project is done I keep it back according to the serial number. The second part of how I deal with these uh, stock items is that I label them. So as you saw that uh, for each of them, I actually have a serial number at the top and I even have the original labels here and that makes it easy to refer to them when I work on a project. Now the third thing that I do is actually documenting all of these parts and I keep them all in a combined spreadsheet. And this is typically how it looks like. It's just a Google spreadsheet. And this is the serial number in column A that I refer to physically down here in my box. And I also have a unique stock reference. And this is something I learned from Peter when he gave his KaiCon 2019 stock. Basically uh, having a convention where you have a short form for the type of item and then the package, it can be 0402, 0603, SMD, and then a little bit more about the value of the part. This kind of ensures that we are not repeating and uh, the stocks are basically kept in the same plastic bag. I also tend to do a date of delivery and also a quantity remaining. In terms of quantity, I also like to grade out as soon as something gets used up because that is the entire point of having a disposable items list. 
So for that, I tend to use conditional formatting and I will automatically color it gray when the number in any uh, cell in column D becomes zero. So for example, if item number 47 instead of 25, it becomes a zero, it will be grayed out. So I'll change it back to 25. And uh, there is also component package value. And wherever possible, I also link them to the part number as well as the data sheet. Now, in terms of project, I do label them which project they come from and also the reference designator. This comes in really, really handy when I'm doing the kitting right before soldering. For example, this is a, a typical box that I use. It comes with uh, little compartments. And as you can see, I have labeled them with the reference designators and I've put the tiny parts inside each of them. And this is what I do typically before just soldering. Now I want to show you one example, how bill of materials is tightly coupled to actually the stock items I keep. For example, for this current project, when I open up the bill of materials in localhost, I actually like to put the stock number right here. For example, let's search for D1 and D2, which is a Schottky diode. It is coming from stock number 52. So this is the example of the Schottky diode that I have. It is coming from uh, stock number 52, which I've labeled right here. And D1, D2 is um, also here uh, in the project component box uh, right before soldering. And I've taken out a couple of Schottky diodes just to solder. Now, one of the cool things of uh, keeping a stock list in a spreadsheet like this is we can go ahead and do some very, very basic analytics. For example, I have gone ahead and put some basic categories to my parts. As you can see, resistors, and um, ICs and capacitors take up most of them. This kind of gives me an overview about what kind of parts I have. I also have a package chart, for example, SMD or 0805, SOT23, SOIC. This also helps me uh, make some kind of decisions about uh, what kind of parts to choose. So I tend to go for 0805 and SMDs mostly. Of course, I do have through hole parts as well. I also have uh, the vendor names uh, that I keep buying the parts from. Uh, this is also a helpful list uh, because it helps me kind of gauge where I get the parts from in terms of logistics. And all these things brings me to the next point, which is very important, and that is standardizing parts. Now, there is this fantastic article from Ben Einstein uh, from Bold uh, Venture Capital, uh, and he talks about what startups can learn from IKEA. Yep, IKEA once again. And he talks a lot about logistics and SKUs and standardizations, which will come in very, very handy for design for manufacturability or assembly, or even design for logistics, which we don't really take note while we are designing the part. This basically means that even though our projects are all different, it tends to use some kind of standardization across the parts. For example, we might uh, focus on just 0805 parts with SMD, or we might uh, get a certain kind of resistor from a certain kind of manufacturer. So keeping this kind of list comes in really, really handy and uh, helps us scale when the volume of the project becomes a lot bigger. So as you can see, it is a very, very simple a process or a system to keep track of the disposable electronics or mechanical items that we tend to have. Now, now this kind of system are uh, great for uh, typically for, let's say, family prototyping labs that we tend to have uh, at our home. This can also be used for, say, hacker spaces or maker spaces in schools or community centers or even, say, uh, prototyping labs inside huge organizations or MNCs. Now, where this will not be applicable are definitely for um, purpose of high volume manufacturing. For that, you probably need an entire different system for each of the product or project lines. 
So I do enjoy taking maybe once a month or once every few months to kind of like clean up and take stock of my items. Once again, this is, I'm not perfect all the time and I do have frustrations when I cannot find a certain item and it's probably lost somewhere in some drawer. But most of the time when I do find it, it really makes the designing work much, much enjoyable. So until I see you again, keep sharpening your tools. Thank you so much.